Hi, and welcome back to the channel. We are continuing Attack on Titan. This is season two, episode two. We just watched, well, both the first episode of season two, and then we watched uh, the OVA, Ilse's Notebook. And just from what happened inside of those two, holy fuck are we intrigued now about what's going to happen, what's up with these Titans. It's going in all sorts of directions. Titans speaking now, beast Titans speak fuck off yetis and it's just oh man are you ready to jump into it yes yes let's do it and you can of course always check out our full length reactions where you can sync up the footage with your own copy of the episode we also have early reactions for attack on titan at the moment where we are several episodes ahead it's all over on patreon and the link is down in the description below and let's my my head is like bossing with like just trying to think about where where it's all going. It was much more easy to, you know, wrap your head around when it was just like humans versus titans. Like yes. and it was just like some sort of Yeah, so humans here inside of the walls, Titans outside, Titans trying to get in and there we go. Like that that was <laughs> Yeah. Somehow easier to um wrap your head around whereas all the elements that they're introducing now is but that's also what is making the series stand out is the fact that what the hell like the, the mystery factor the intrigue is just it increases each and every fucking time it's a bit like dark in a way i think oh yeah 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 i guess you can compare it in that way yeah oh no is that connie i'm home oh Murder? What? What? No man with Pixies. Pixies. <laughs> Back in Stoas. Oh yeah, there's still fucking titans inside of the walls. Like, what the... the <laughs> ここ<笑><笑> some sort of valuable information it seems like he knows something yeah each one of those like sections Segments, yeah. could be a titan mm. And the power of intense yelling is not going to help you here. もう試した。私には司祭が真っ当な判断力を持った人間に見えるんだ。彼が口を閉ざすには人類滅亡より重要な理由があるのかもしれない。More important? Oh, something gonna happen to. さあ、また食料を与えてから。こら、くだ。もういい。好きにし。さあ、お前はこの世界がどうなってるか考えたことはあるんか。そんな、よそ者が来て、森や獲物を横取りするからやし。その人たちも住みかを奪われ仕方なくここに流れてきとる森を切り開き穀物を植える方が多くの人の腹を満たすことができるんてななんで私らをバカにしているやつらのためにそんなことせんといかんのそりゃあな我々は世界に生かしても
けどなサシャそれと心中する覚悟はあるんか義務を果たさんもんかその恩恵を受けることができんのは当然やからなあれ以来三年かいて I like the way he was like putting that the way he was saying all that こんな奥まで来てるなんてここはもう人が住める土地じゃないあれは新しい村Seems like a lot happened in those three years. Oh. Um. Huh? What the f. So on for the cities. The fuck is going on here? <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> Can you try again? Save this woman? Why are you so nice when you talk? Wow. Sasha, come on, 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 come on. そろそろうぜんだがお前のそのバカ丁寧な喋り方だお前故郷の言葉が恥ずかしいんだろ狩猟以外のこと何にも知らなくて世間や人が怖いんだなあ方親にでもちょっと弓いる伊藤さんお前
Fucking <sighs> questions, questions, questions. Again. But that was season two, episode two. I'm home. And that was the case for well be, Spent the majority of the episode with Sasha, yeah. it seemed like. Mm. And it, it was neat to kind of go back in time with her as well and see where she comes from and her relationship with her father, just getting to know her better and then getting to that village. Um, at, at first, it was just straight up disturbing because the only people she found in, in the village was a smaller-ish titan mm -hmm. eating a woman who was still alive, who was just not, like, she had bad legs or something, and that's why she yeah. couldn't leave the village. And then this kid who was just sitting there completely traumatized. Yeah. Fuck. And it was like, it was because people just didn't help. Like, no one came mm -hmm. to help them. Even though they knew that her legs were bad. But that, that also ties into exactly what uh, Sasha's father was talking about. Yes. Like, if you choose to sit down do nothing mm. when other people call for help. Yeah. Because you're doing fine. You're inside the woods. You don't get... Yeah, you around. don't want to give anything up and you don't want to change the way you're living. No, and mm. it, it, she also said that uh, she saw those uh, tracks uh, and I think the whole blue thing uh, lighting up when she saw the tracks was kind of like a way to show that she is a hunter so she's used to, you know, hunting mm. tracks. Um, yeah. So I think when she saw those titan steps, she was like, they've never, like, they, they then never venture this far in the forest. Mm, yeah. Uh, you don't usually see Titan tracks here. Exactly. Mm. So they must they must have lived a very safe and like a secluded life there. And the whole way like the whole conversation between Sasha and her father was mm. is, I think was very uh interesting. Um because yes. it, it gave us a lot of like information about like the state of the world and uh, it must. It was. It was uh, three years ago. So mm. it was after the, all these people have been sent out. Yeah. Um. So of course they search or they go to the woods to uh, kind of live there. And she's like, I don't want to share my food. I don't want to share my safety and my my like my fairly privileged spot here in the woods. Yeah. Um. I don't want to break with traditions either because like yeah. hunting, it's who we are and it's more important to just keep being who we are instead of changing things up uh, and, and risk yeah. losing what we got. And then her father was like, yeah, but it's like we, we kind of have to care for other people as well. We have mm. to like, we have to see us as a big hole like we yeah. just one functional system we have mm. to take care of each other whether you're inside the walls or outside the walls or yeah, we have to work together across like, all humanity yeah yes so even us here uh it, yeah it, it would make sense to actually uh, try and, and and get some um oh that's we're still inside the walls right yeah oh yeah okay sorry i was thinking they were still like they were outside the walls um, sorry. Uh, still though. So they wanted to grow crops. Mm, yeah, he, because, he wanted to do that. At yeah. Least, so to, to support the cities and the other people who are yeah. in need. In need, yeah. And I think it just, I, I kind of like that. And she was just being a little bit like, mm, and but, of course it's like, if, if, if that's everything you know, it, it, you have to. It's. You, it's understandable that you would react like that when something is threatening your way of life yeah. in one way or another. But I do think that the, the whole conversation between Sasha and her father is very indicative of like, human nature in general when yeah. it comes to this stuff. Where you, you can definitely see from the point of view with Sasha where like we, we, have, a, we have a good life here. Mm. And it is... It can be very risky to go out of your way and, you know, to maybe necessarily like to help others. Uh, it might not pan out the way and you might risk losing more uh, in, in that way. 
but then when you see it from from her father's point of view it's it's more the case of well yeah we humans are used to live like pack animals mm. we have a lot of disagreements and we live in different ways across mm. the world but we cannot afford to do that right now because mm. we are in such a big crisis mode like there's such a big issue a problem that we cannot solve unless we help each other out and unless we come together and and that can also it can be something that relates to reality for sure as well where like, there are a lot of problems in in the real world as well where some people would argue that why should i go out of my way to help others when i then risk losing what i have mm. and is, is that even going to better the situation is, is that a risk that i want to take is that a choice i want to make but when humanity as a whole is faced with a problem where we cannot solve it unless we work together i, I could come up with examples but i don't want to like start a whole fucking political discussion down in the comments but at least i like the notion and i'm sure you do as well that when something like that happens then we do need to work together and yes we're gonna have to give up on something, something yeah. on something but i can't help but think of, of course in in this situation specifically because they decided to stay there and not like they were not getting any help mm. from the outside um but i also can't help but think because when she got to the village she mm. was like oh a whole new village yeah, a lot has happened there. So, so, so just in those three years, it's been growing. May, yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, it's been growing. Yeah, because it probably took in people. But I cannot help but think, yes, they took in people and they go to the city. They must have been uh, doing some farm work, like some uh, work, uh, um, growing some crops and stuff, mm -hmm. and actually doing what uh, her father was talking about. Yeah. But I cannot help but think that maybe that's also what happened. Like, that's maybe what led the... What the attracted tit the Titans. Yes. Yeah, that, that some, suddenly the Titan actually found its way to their place. Mm. And, and and that was the risk. And that was the risk. Mm. Um, luckily, they had horses for everyone. Yeah, they were out so helping could, people in the area. Yeah, <laughs> so they could just uh, evacuate people. And I think, mm. so far, I think he's... like and, Okay, sorry. There's a lot of things to unpack in this one. Uh, so we also had this conversation, um, like this flashback mm -hmm. to when she was in training. And we met, met this person. That was an interesting one. Ymir. We heard the name just before. And she kind of looks a little bit like Ilse with the uh, kind of short uh, brown dark hair. Yes, um, like a sharp face as well. Kind of, yeah. It, yeah. Uh, it kind of looked like freckles, maybe. I mm. can't re remember if Ilse had freckles, but something like that. Anyway, she was a very person. And... Um, <laughs> Quite a bit she, of an asshole. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I feel like she was privileged and she came from... I don't know if it's... It's just, just a, a first-hand assumption. But it feels like the way that she was basically mocking Sasha for the way she, that she was talking, mm. that she had a definitely another life and probably a, a little bit more privileged. I don't know. Because she yeah. was like calling like her the, like... the center maybe or like the... I don't know if it was the center, but maybe Cena. this... Yeah. Uh, I don't know if, where she was from, but she gave mm. off that kind of like brat, bratish behavior that you can sometimes get when you're mm. a little yeah. bit uh, yeah, privileged. And the way that she was mocking Sasha and even like mm -hmm. saying stuff like like you're stupid yeah, and yeah, yeah. you talk stupid and mm -hmm. you're trying to cover it up because you're embarrassed. I just think it goes to show that the people living on the outskirts in the maybe not so safe areas, Area. they're doing a lot to help people. And again, this just ties straight into that like classicism thing that I'd love to talk about. Mm. And, and yeah, no they're, they're the ones giving up things like they're the ones who are struggling they're the ones who are helping and they even like told us with these um cities communities that live in forests or outside and they grow crops and they send food to the big cities yeah. so the big cities are dependent on mm -hmm. these people living on the outskirts who are risking everything and that's definitely why also, you can like look at people like yeah. Emia and think that oh you sound like a privileged asshole right now um because you're not you don't come from a place that, like that's risking the same mm. things and also the way that they're speaking so they definitely had their own 
specific uh, dialect. Yeah, just just from the way the the, the translation went. Uh, yeah, the subtitles. And th- yeah, and I think especially for a country like ours, mm. very small country, we have there's a, a huge difference between people living here in the capital mm. versus people that lives long, like far out in the country. Yeah. That usually have a lot uh, sharper dialects, like or sharper, dis- you know what I mean? Like More they distinctive have distinctive style. dialects. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I come from a place where we far out, far, far, far out. It'll never be that far out when you're talking about Denmark because everything is relatively close. But in- inside the country of Denmark, it is far out. It's yeah. far out, <laughs> and we do have distinguished, distinguished, uh, or distinctive uh, dialects where I'm from. Um, sometimes definitely more distinctive than others, but people in the capital has this thing that because we have these very strong dialects, mm. we might be a little bit simple or simple minded. Yes. I, I, and I think I think that's something that applies to every everywhere. country, everywhere. I'm just trying to put it into perspective. In that's something city. I know. Yes, 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 yes. And from my background, because mm. I grew up like Sasha. Mm. Uh, and, the... and and then again, I've also experienced, you know, because I've I've always lived in and around the city, the capital. So I my accent is I sound very much like someone who is from Copenhagen. And I've also tried, you know, being then like then going the to opposite, other cities, yeah. like the opposite, where I start speaking and someone's like, "Wait, are you from Copenhagen?" And then yeah, and they're like, "Fuck you, I don't want to talk to you." Kind of a deal almost. Yes. Where it's like, "Oh, come on." Come on. <laughs> because we have a tendency yeah. of like listening to language and then we are making snap judgments and just don't yeah. do that in general. Just and be a good person towards everyone for fuck's and, sake. And then if you have a very like cuz I have I kind of kind of have an an adaptive uh dialect. Mm. So I definitely speak more in my uh hometown dialect. Yeah, if um if if I'm with someone from there, or if I'm actually back there, so mm, it's, with it's, it's a bit like a yes. code switching thing. Because yes. then, as soon as I get over here, I hear it easily. Like when when you switch, <laughs> yeah, because the, the switch is the I think it's called code switching. Mm. Uh, it's, but but I, I don't know if it's specifically to certain types of. I think it's called AAP or something. Or mm. yeah, whatever. I'm not so much into other dialects than Danish. Uh, so um, this is code switching going on. And I think it's just like it's not necessarily completely unconscious, subconscious. Mm. Sorry, that I do this switching, or because I think the reason why I do have multiple dialects, a way of speaking, is because mm. I'm kind of like I'm trying to adapt to where I'm coming from. And I think that it's the same with, with Sasha here that she's kind of like yeah, adapting yeah. a little bit and just trying to shield uh, or uh, hide. Sorry, she's trying to hide uh, her natural dialect that she from yeah, yeah. That, that I'm sure a lot of people they, they, they know that feeling as well either adapting to some place they move to from where they came from and then when they come back they kind of switch back into like just talking the way that they used to when they were kids and yeah it, it's a fairly common thing I'm sure but I just like the I, was it Krista I, th- I think it was yeah yeah that defending she her. was yeah defend completely just defending her yeah. and just being straight out just saying you're being so insensitive yeah and just fuck off you I know? like <laughs> Sasha and Sasha has to be I think Sasha should be and talk the way that exactly what yeah. she should if, that if whoever what, Sasha wants to be yeah just do it let her man <laughs> yeah, like, let her stop picking on her for trying to mask mm. her and I think we've seen Emir pick on people yeah. before like She's several rad. times. And I was just about to say, I think I recognize this this privileged asshole. And then the whole Emir name came in and was like, is there a fucking connection there? And I have no idea if there is. At least we, we noticed it. And now we're just going to be aware of it because there's, there's nothing else we can connect. We've not really spent time with this character that much. And right now it just seems like a bit of a coincidence, but it could also be connected. So let, let's see wh- where that goes. But it, that wasn't the only thing that happened in this episode. It actually no. went in several directions. Like at first, we spent time with Aaron and Mikasa, mm-hmm. and they're moving out. And Hanji is there, and Levi, and they got this priest with them who won't say anything. Mm-hmm. So they're just gonna take them, take him with them, 
out into like the the open field and show him like the horribleness of titans what's going on stuff, with the yeah. titans and maybe that will get him talking and we we, we sort of want that guy to talk because he knows something about those fucking walls yeah and that's a big mystery as well and even like Armin had a theory where it was like the so the walls are made up of titan, titan skin hardened titan skin in the same way that like what annie did yeah. although it looks very different and it, it, it that is also one of those things where we're gonna be the, on the lookout for more information but right now it's just like i have no idea of, like how to connect that so <laughs> if, and yes yeah, so that's if it we talked about like the, the, each section being a, a titan. titan yes so the titans are protecting the humans but from are titans. they protecting or keeping them in. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, oh, which is what so they said. Many in the, questions. Yeah. So many questions. So fucking many <laughs> questions. <laughs> um, and they even ended the episode on a question with them getting uh, at the very end to Connie's mm-hmm. village. Another, I'm home and fuck. And this Titan was laying on his house, but its its body and its muscles had deteriorated. And it couldn't move. And it was like, how did it even get there? It almost then? looked like it was being thrown. Yeah, it had been thrown. So has it been thrown by something or someone? We, we saw the has? Beast Titan throw a horse in the, yeah. in the first episode of season two. So why least. would you throw it? And like, what happened? What happened to Connie's yeah. family? Because it was definitely his house. It, yeah. Uh, so much more is going on out there. Than, it's clearly... You know still alive right so yeah otherwise it, it would have you know burned away uh yeah and it's just like how can if it's like let's say it's like a muscle atrophy mm. so how is it not regenerating yeah why yeah and also it had like ribs was it that it seemed like, it was, like there were ribs, ribs or rib cage yeah. mm. <sighs> so many questions yes it ended on that and a to be continued what the fuck is going on? Another one. And another one of those, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, oh, fuck, I'm enjoying this journey so, so, so much. Do you have anything else you want to add to, to this one in particular? No, sorry I talk so much. No, 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 don't be sorry, don't be sorry. That, it's, a, it's a good talk, I think. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you as soon as possible. That's not how I usually do it. I usually say... But that'll do it for this reaction (laughs) and review of Attack on Titan Season 2, Episode 2. We'll see you guys as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.